Chapter 18 Blood in the Tracks It was a very silent scream. Too silent. Oh no! I thought, not another vision! Hershey put his hand on my shoulder. Ah! I tried to scream, but nothing came out. A long, slow stream poured down my leg, and I collapsed into my own pool on the ground. Hershey knelt down beside me. Bill, I'm not sure what you're keeping out, but it's all okay. It's been a long couple of days. Hershey put his hand out, and I grabbed it, and he pulled me up. Oh, uh, where, where, where's old man Maynard, I asked. Maynard went inside to get something. He said he'll be right back. What did you mean by brain hurts? I whimpered. Bill, did you see old man Maynard's finger? Hershey asked. Yeah, how could I miss it with all that blood, I answered. Bill, he's the deflator. It wasn't blood. It was dye. It was dye from our tires, Hershey explained. My mind was a confused mess. m m m m it's the deflator, I stammered. It would appear to be the only logical reason his hands are red, Steve explained. Just then, old man Maynard came running. Well, not exactly running, but moving faster than an old man Maynard generally moves. Out of the house, towards me, carrying a mug of water with a cow portrait on it. Drink this, Bill, he said. I looked first at Hershey. And then Steve, who nodded. It was just what I needed. I was parched. I started to chug it down. It had a strange flavor. I spit it out, disgusted. Are you trying to poison me, I cough? Ice tea ain't poison, son. It's cool relief. Well, it's poison to me, I grumped. It was then I got a better look at Maynard's fingers. It was our dog. Ah, oh, a trap had gotten him good. So you're the villainous deflator, said Hershey. I ain't villainous. Although I may have let the air out of your tires. Steve had that look. That looked like he had it all figured out. You did it because we rode across your lawns with our bikes, didn't you? You're a tootin' super genius shooter, you are, old man Maynard chortled. Uh, Sutter, Steve said. You know, Mr. Maynard, I'm beginning to like you, Hershey said. Yeah, said Steve. That was an impressive prank you pulled off. The statues talking to Bill. Great. I wish I had your imagination. A serious, righteous prank of Bill. Hey, I don't need no friends. Especially young, stupid twerps like you. And the glowing statue prank, that was yours. I had nothing to do with it, Maynard responded. Oh, I want to go home, I mumbled. What, said Hershey? Oh, I want to go home, I screamed. I was done. I was overwhelmed, uncomfortable, wet, and seriously confused. Hershey and Steve took my hand, and without another word, started to lead me home. While crossing the golf purse, I turned to Hershey. Cow in the mug. It, it it looked exactly like Maynard's old cow. Yeah, I think that was a picture of Ninor. There's a kiosk at the mall, which will do that. Hmm. Kind of cool, I shrugged. I wonder whatever happened to that cow. It just seemed to disappear last winter, I finished. Steve gave Hershey a mysterious glance. Better tell him, Hershey said. Tell me what? Well, do you remember the whole incident last year with Metzger's snowplow? Steve explained. Well, of course I do. Man, Metzger Stoplock got detached as it rounded the corner and sailed across Maynard's yard and knocked down his zoo statue and made it all the way to the bank of Milk Creek. And that was freaking awesome. Yes, but there was some collateral damage. Steve looked down. That was the last time anyone saw the cow, Hershey finished. What happened? I asked. No one knows exactly sure, but my dad said when Maynard went looking for her, he followed the tracks in the snow, and they ended up where the plow crossed them. Oh, well, maybe Nino ran away, I said. <sighs> maybe, but there was blood on the tracks. They figured she was plowed in the Mill Creek and floating down, and then she plunged over the Daisy Mill Dam. That's why nobody ever found her body. First his wife dies, then his beloved <sighs> cow. This was too much. <sighs> we finished our walk across <sighs> the golf course in silence. <sighs> At my front door, Hershey gave me a hug, which was a little weird. I wasn't used to hugs, oh, but I but I liked it. Later, Bill, Steve waved. I gave a little hand wave. Brain nerd, chuckled Hershey, trying to cheer me up. I, I winced and turned and gave the stink eye, but when I caught Hershey's twinkling eye, I laughed. Well, later, dudes, I mumbled as I closed my kitchen door. That night, I lay in bed listening to the rain trying to pull the pieces together. I get it. We moved the statues. Uh, Maynard deflated our tires. But why did the statues come to life? 
Oh, why did Eleanor try to talk to me? And what did she mean when she said I should be in the moment? What other moment is there? Hershey and Steve said I was knocked unconscious, and in my vision of Eleanor it wasn't real. But I know the truth. I saw what I saw. I know I saw Eleanor. She spoke to me. It was real. This is the end of Chapter 18, Blood on the Tracks. It's also the end of the Enchanted Statues, a Hershey Lemon story. I hope you enjoyed it.